The August full moon reaches its peak illumination on Thursday, August 11th, 2022. It will be the last supermoon of the year. Supermoons are defined as full moons that occur while the moon is at its nearest point to the Earth. Supermoons are ever so slightly closer to Earth than the average full moon, which technically makes them a bit larger and brighter from our perspective. August full moon is traditionally called the sturgeon moon because the giant sturgeon of the Great Lakes and Lake Champlain were most readily caught during this part of the summer. These prehistoric looking fish have been traced back to around 136 million years ago, and many people call them living fossils. The lake sturgeon is quite rare today due to intense overfishing in the 19th century, pollution, and damage to their habitat. On the East Coast, the moon will be exact at 9.35 p.m. on August 11th at 19 degrees 21 minutes in the sign of Aquarius. The moon deals with emotions and feelings. The 12th house deals with mental health. The moon is not comfortable in the air sign of Aquarius. It would prefer to express compassion from a community or group perspective, for example, in supporting humanitarian causes. During this transit, emotional connections at the personal level are more of a challenge and can add stress to your life. The planet Saturn is conjunct the moon. Saturn is very concerned about having rules and structure. Being in the sign of Aquarius, these rules and structures must support the demands of personal and individual freedom. While these two directions seem to be opposite, Saturn is the classical ruler of Aquarius. So the uncomfortable moon is strengthened and structured by the energies of Saturn. The full moon is opposed by the sun in Leo in the sixth house of physical health and day-to-day -day life. The sun rules the fire sign of Leo, which strengthens it. The sun represents how you express your real self. In the sign of Leo, it deals with how you feel the need to lead, take risks, and seek recognition. In the sixth house, your central purpose is to gain confidence through competence, usually through some type of work or activity. You shine in positions where you use your skills in service to others. The Aquarius Leo axis for this full moon is about balancing the needs of the many versus the needs of the one. The Aquarius moon, while individualistic as well, values independence and the team, community, and group spirit. The Leo sun is proud and intensely individual, not content with simply being just one of the team. The opposition found in this full moon chart illuminates this conflict. The minor grand trine is a common aspect pattern. It occurs when one planet sextiles two planets that are in a trine aspect and forms a long triangle. This favorable pattern is associated with creativity and intelligence. If you have a minor grand trine in your chart, you can depend on being able to put your plans into action and achieve positive results. This pattern also highlights intuition and insight. The three transiting planets involved in this minor grand trine are Mars, Neptune, and Pluto. Mars is the planet of action how you express your energy. In the sign of Taurus, the energy takes on a patient, practical, reliable feel. Mars in the second house deals with things of value like money, possessions, and financial security. Neptune is the planets of dreams and illusions. Neptune helps you connect to your spiritual side. 
It also deals with mental health and deeply held secrets. Neptune in the sign of Pisces in the 12th house is especially strong because it rules both Pisces as well as the 12th house. Since Neptune is conjunct the ascendant, it also takes on some first house characteristics. This will encourage you to take action to manifest your goals. Pluto deals with transformation and regeneration. In the sign of Capricorn, that energy represents structures and organization. The 11th house deals with groups of friends and humanitarian efforts. You may have an opportunity to personally engage with a group that aligns with both your beliefs and causes you support. There may be fundraising or finances involved. Since we're dealing with lunar energies in this full moon analysis, let's look at the lunar nodes in more depth. The nodes in a transit chart, which is what the full moon chart truly is, reflect universal energies, the direction the universe is encouraging us to go. The Taurus-Scorpio axis is about the balance between stabilizing versus transforming energy. The North Node is our karmic direction on a more cosmic universal level. Since the North Node is in Taurus, this pushes us towards more stability in our lives. The North Node in the second house applies that desire for stability to our financial assets and things we value. The Taurus North Node encourages self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency is feeling secure and content with oneself, a deep-rooted sense of inner completeness and stability, a sense of well-being. Uranus is forming a conjunction to the North Node. The Uranian energy is applying to the conjunction, which makes it stronger. Uranus will help the North Node achieve its goals of independence and self-sufficiency by unexpected means, perhaps redefining what it means to be secure, comfortable, wealthy, or stable, perhaps redefining what it is we truly value in life. The South Lunar Node is in Scorpio in the eighth house. Scorpio energy is secretive, intense, and powerful. The eighth house is about other people's money. The source can be from the government, like Social Security, or other sources, like inheritances or life insurance proceeds. The South Node indicates the directions we're evolving away from. In this case, dependency on others for financial and resource support. People with a strong sense of self-sufficiency are less likely to be destabilized by life events, both positive and negative, that are swirling around them. With our continuing focus on the lunar nodes, there is an important conjunction taking place on July 31st. The planet Uranus will exactly conjunct the universal north node at 4.04 p.m. for those living on the east coast. The conjunction will be formed at 18 degrees Taurus, 41 minutes. This conjunction in the sign of Taurus will only occur one time in this sequence. In other words, it will not experience multiple hits due to retrograde motion that we frequently observe. The next time Uranus will conjunct the Universal North Node will be in the year 2037 in the sign of Cancer. We've already discussed the energy pattern from the Taurus-Scorpio perspective. For this specific conjunction on July 31st, we're back to the 6th and 12th house axis again. This North Node conjunction is in the Earth sign of Taurus and in the house ruled by the Earth sign of Virgo. Earth energy represents substance and physical form. Earth energy is concerned with the physical, the material, and with issues of worth and value. On a personal level, the universal energy of the North Node is encouraging us to think about the day-to-day -day existence on this physical plane 
versus our hopes, dreams, and visions. With a north node in the sign of Taurus in the sixth, our focus will be directed to the practical aspects of living, our work and our health. The north node is telling us that we need to focus on the physical matters and do the work necessary to take care of them. Up until this point, the energy of Uranus has been applying towards the North Node, adding the element of the unexpected or an unusual approach to the equation. After this conjunction, the energies will begin to separate. The Uranian influence will begin to dissipate. We've had this period of the Uranian conjunction to do some soul searching about what we truly value as individuals and as a people we've been forced to reevaluate our expectations. The energies for this full moon are about balancing the needs of the many versus the needs of the one. The Aquarius moon, while individualistic, values the team, community, and group spirit. The Leo sun is proud and intensely individual and not content with simply just being one of the team. The opposition found in this full moon chart illustrates this conflict between the energies of these two luminaries. People with planets around 19 degrees will feel the effects of this full moon energy more strongly, especially if those planets are in the fixed signs of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. The Universal North Node encourages financial independence. People with a strong sense of self-sufficiency are less likely to be destabilized by life events, both positive and negative, that are swirling around them. With the positive energies of the minor grand trine, you may have an opportunity to personally engage with a group that aligns with both your beliefs and causes you support. There may be fundraising or finances involved. Thank you for watching. If you would like to be notified of future videos, please subscribe and click the notify bell icon so you'll know when new videos come out. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the thumbs up icon.